Good morning and welcome to the Kingston Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. My name is Margaret Bradley and I am one of the deacons. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I have a few announcements. The flowers are given today by Linda and Angelo, and Angelo Mandillo in loving memory of their parents, Helen and Philip Carlson and Dora and Angelo Mandillo. Uh, those singing with music director Enrico Garzilli this morning in the singing of the hymns are Sharon Davis, Susan Hammond Wynn, Frank Lennox, and me, Margaret Bradley. And finally, the Board of Missions and Social Justice reminds us again of the Christmas offering. And apparently we are able to make donations to that up through Christmas Eve. Good morning and welcome to worship. Those who are joining us live on Sunday, December 13th, and those who are perhaps coming across this recording later on in the day or week. God is timeless though, and so we are together in spirit no matter where and no matter when we gather. Here, this call to worship, it is taken for, from the Psalm for today, Psalm 126. And if you have the order of worship, you can read responsively or simply listen to the beautiful lyric of the song. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the na nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses in the Negev. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. On this third Sunday of Advent, when we celebrate the joy of the Lord, it is right and it is joyful to remember the words of Mary, the Magnificat in our opening hymn, My Soul Gives Glory to My God. My soul gives glory to my Lord, my heart pours out and tears, God left in hell my loneliness, in many a lost place. 
join me in the invocation and the Lord's Prayer. Great creator, we are in awe of you. You are the one who dreamed up mountains and valleys, the milky sweet smell of babies, the crepe paper softness of older hands, the gleam of intelligence in the eyes of our, our youth, the innate confidence of well-loved four-year-olds. We want to follow Mary's lead and allow our souls to sing. So open our hearts, minds, and mouths to join her song of joy. May we too magnify your goodness, grace, justice, and peace till this world is awash in song and filled with dreams. Like Jesus, we pray for that day that is coming. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I dream of soccer games and video games. I dream of hockey games and days with my friends. I dream of celebrating holidays with a house full of people. I dream of days at our cabin by the lake. I dream of every little thing that brings joy, and I know it comes from God. So today we let the candle of joy as a reminder that God's dream for this world involves the end of all tears. God's dream for this world involves a joy that overflows and is contagious. So may this fire burn bright, and as it does, may we sing. May we dance. May we laugh. May we hold on to the people we love. May we sow joy in a hurting world, and may it be an act of holy resistance. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 to 4 and eight to 11. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities the devastation of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. Now the gospel reading for today, which is the song of Mary. This is taken from the first chapter of Luke, verses 46 through 55. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, 
for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now all, on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Would you please pray with me? O oh God of merciful reversals, whose grace turns the world upside down, whose joy reorders our lives. May we listen deeply for these songs, both in scripture and in our lives, and let them loose into the world by the way we live. We pray this according to the name and love that we know in Jesus Christ. Amen. Advent, we light a candle named joy. And our Advent scriptures are full of joy. Isaiah reminds us that God's anointed one comes to us bringing good news, glad tidings, and the oil of gladness instead of mourning. The psalmist with whom, whose words we began worship, remembers for us the joy of God's saving grace. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Mary's joyous song, the Magnificat, pronounces a world-shifting joy. Perhaps this year, more than most, we need to remember joy. We need to be reminded that the joy of the Lord is our strength. But joy, such as Isaiah foretold and Mary sang, is so much more than holiday cheer or season's greetings. The joy they speak of is transformative. Joy that changes those who possess it and perhaps even changes the world. Isaiah foretells Jubilee, the year of the Lord's favor, when wrongs are righted and debts are canceled and those in bondage are set free. This isn't the joy of the familiar the known, the comfortable. This is the joy of transformation. When wrongs are righted, burdens list, lifted, and freedom is restored. Those who receive this good news, who take this joy to heart, will be called oaks of righteousness and showing forth the glory of God in rebuilding the world around them. This is the joy that we invoke in Advent. Joy to the world that renewal and redemption are possible, that there really is an answer to the oppression of the world, that true healing and comfort are available to our broken hearts and our broken bodies, that a world held captive to sin and selfishness might really be free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, free at last. The gifts offered by God's Messiah are not gadgets 
or gizmos, but comfort and joy at the deepest level, good news and a promise of a world restored. And that is the source of our joy. The Apostle Paul famously encouraged his churches to rejoice always. He wrote those words to the Thessalonians and the Philippians, churches that were struggling to survive, struggling to keep the faith, struggling with doubts and questions in light of the suffering that they themselves were experiencing in the world around them and in their own bodies. We rejoice always, not because life is easy and we haven't a care in the world or the Fates have dealt kindly with us, or things lie well for us in our own lives. But we rejoice always because the one who calls us is faithful and will not forget nor forsake us and will work in us and in our world the ways of salvation. The joy we harbor goes so much deeper than simple happiness. Happiness will come and go, and I wish much of it for you. But more than happiness, I wish you joy. Joy that is the fruit of the Spirit within us, and it cannot be taken away. And joy, Isaiah and Mary knew, is powerful stuff. Joy refuses to be cowed by circumstance. Joy puts up fierce resistance in the face of persecution. Joy is rooted in the deep soil of God's heart. And when our roots are grounded in that rich stuff, the strongest wind, the most violent storm might shake but cannot move us. Jesus said to his disciples, these things I have spoken to you that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be full. Yvonne Dilling, a church worker from Indiana who spent time in Salvadoran refugee camps in Honduras during the time of much violence and heartache in El Salvador, tells the story of one group of Salvadoran refugees that fled their village and across the Lempa River to Honduras while helicopters strafed the shores. People died in the crossing. But when the refugees got to Honduras and set up their camp, their first action was to call and convene three committees a construction committee, an education committee, and El Comité de Alegría, the Committee of Joy. Celebration was and still is as basic to life as is the digging of latrines and the education of our children, even in exile. They and we remember to build and to plant and to dance. Earlier in the COVID pandemic this spring, when many countries, especially in Europe, were experiencing an increased infection rate and going into lockdown, our televisions and our computer screens gave us, gave us glimpses of neighbors in high rises singing opera out their windows in Italy or performing violin concertos in Spain while listeners leaned over the railings and couples danced on balconies. Here and now, even as the weather becomes less amenable to outdoor festivities, we are still finding ways to create and celebrate joy. Zoom parties, fire pit gatherings, virtual choirs, cookies baked for hardworking nonprofit heroes, and pizza box advent kits delivered to doorsteps. 
Was there ever a year in your life where Christmas cards were more welcome or needed than this one? The Christmas cards that I have ordered and will be sending this year have one word on the front and the word is joy. And in the middle of the circle that forms the O, o is the profile of a manger. Christmas Eve, come Christmas Eve, the story we're telling, the story we are building week by week towards in Advent will break out into full on joy. The angels will sing of joy to all people. The shepherds will rejoice over what they have seen and heard and we will sing joy to the world. The Lord is come. But even before we get there, even now, in the midst of this purple season and this purple world, we claim joy. Music, art, friendship, poetry, nature, laughter, beauty, God with us. These gifts are not perishable, are not restricted, and are not diminished, finally, in the end by pandemic. Changed, maybe but not destroyed. These gifts light a candle in us and ignite joy. Not because life is easy or unacquainted with grief, but because all the grief we know, all the grief we have lived through, all the grief we've survived has not and will not extinguish our joy. Like the story of Hanukkah that our Jewish neighbors are remembering this week, we celebrate a light that continues to burn even in the darkest of nights. Interesting that no language has as many words for joy as does Hebrew. For words for joy and rejoicing. In the Old Testament, 13 roots found in 27 different words are used for some aspect of joy and joyful participation in religious worship. In contrast to the rituals of other faiths in the ancient Near East, Israelite worship was essentially the joyous proclamation and celebration of God's goodness. The Israelites regarded the act of thanking God as a supreme joy. Even as a community and people well acquainted with suffering and grief, they never forgot that God is the source of our joy. The psalmist says, Thou dost show me the path of life. In thy presence there is fullness of joy. In thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. The joy that Isaiah announced, that Mary sang, is a profound joy that defies circumstance because it is not beholden to circumstance. It is the joy of Emmanuel, the good news of God with us, not just brightening a season, but changing our lives and our world forever. It is the joy of God's anointed one who came and comes to us and will come again and again and always where needed to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Weeping may last for a night time, but joy comes in the morning. So, let us rejoice. Rejoice always, even. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Jesus intends for us fullness of joy. So, go dance on your balcony. Read bedtime stories to your grandchildren over Zoom. Send 
Christmas cards, bespeaking friendship, bake cookies, light candles, stubbornly, faithfully, defiantly claim joy. That joy, Mary tells us, can turn the world upside down. Amen. have the following celebrations and concerns for us today. Wayne and G. Lee want to have their joy shared that they celebrated their granddaughter Riley's first birthday last Saturday the 5th. And some will know and recall that Grace, uh, that Riley's mother is Grace who was baptized, who sang in the junior choir, and who was confirmed at the Kingston Congregational Church. Also, we have best wishes for Judy Parman and for Elizabeth McNabb, who both had birthdays this week. Michelle Davis requests prayers of healing for her brother, who had a partial cornea transplant this week. And finally, our prayers continue for Grace who has COVID. She moved from the hospital to the nursing center this past week. And though stable, she is quite weak. Uh, please call the church office if you would like the address to which to send her a card. Please join me in prayer for those concerns and celebrating those joys that we have lifted up and also the ones that are on our own hearts known certainly to you but also and always to god let us pray oh you Creator God, redeeming one, sustaining spirit, we gather conscious of your presence. We gather across space and time and yet knit together by your timeless love, your ceaseless joy, your redeeming grace. Hold us, we pray, as we hold the world in prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the comfort and joy of this season, sung to us in scripture and song, preached on the mouths of young women who have found favor in your sight. Lord, grant us the comforts that we so long in this time of pandemic and isolation, of suffering and endless care on the front lines of illness and rehabilitation. We pray for the comfort of love, your love, but we pray also that you would discomfort us with a love when our love is too insular. We pray for the comfort of friendship and community, but we pray also that you would discomfort us when our friendship 
is too small and does not cross the bounds that you have crossed before us of nation and race, of gender, orientation, status, or ethnicity. Comfort us, O oh God, with good news that brings hope, even when infection rates soar and death toll rises and joblessness increases. Oh Lord, give us the good news we so long for and need. But discomfort us, we pray. When the good news that we seek is only for ourselves or only for those already blessed, help us to reach out and beyond, to upset the tables and the scales and shower the needy with the wealth of our world. We pray, oh God, for the comfort of your peace. Peace in our hearts when anxiety and fear threaten to overtake them. But we ask that you would discomfort us when we settle for peace without justice, without restitution, without fairness or equality to keep it company, justice in name only and not practice. We pray, oh God, for the comfort of your grace in our lives, for the faith that we need and the faith that you plant like a seed of joy within us to become an oak of righteousness. But discomfort us, oh God, when the faith that we practice or the grace we imagine is too small or stingy that does not include the fullness of your humanity and the world you love. For we are to be a people of joy, full joy, complete joy, joy in the world and not just joy for ourselves. And so we pray for this world, for those in need of your healing touch, and with celebration for the simple joys of this world. We thank you for the birthdays that have been marked and celebrated, for births even now, for milestones in marriage and life, for all the ways, oh Lord, in the families in our church and around the world, are lighting candles, are making festive their lives are remembering the joy that gives us strength for the Lee family and for Judy and Elizabeth and all the births that we celebrate. And may our prayers reach out and tend those who need your healing touch. We have remembered out loud Grace and Michelle's brother and we bring to mind all our friends and family, this nation and our world, those who suffer and your beloved poor. Bring healing, O oh God, in the name of the one who is our Savior. And finally, O oh Holy One, meet us in the hardship of this pandemic, in this time of unrest and unsettledness in our nation, in a world that is striving to bring healing to every corner of the globe, around its width and from pole to pole. We know that you are the healer who works through the hands of medicine, and those who give care. So thank you, oh God. Speed and tend and protect the vaccines that are even now wending their way into the world by your grace and the intelligence you have instilled in your people. And we pray wrapping ourselves in a mantle of praise in the name of our Christ, whose joy is completed in us. Amen.
Even now there are cookies mounting on a table in Fellowship Hall. There are gift cards being ordered and donated to important organizations in our community. There are luminaries being ordered and dedicated for our lights of hope, the proceeds of which will support children in our area. There are pledges and offerings being sent in through envelopes or shot in by hand into the mailbox outside the office. There are lives being lived with courage and dedication and generosity, helping one another, serving, whether out loud, but always in the name of Christ, the members of this church reaching out into the world. This is our offering. It is so needed. It is so gratefully received. Thank you. Let us pray. May the gifts we give and the dreams we dream, may the lives we live and the faith we share bless this world you so love, O oh God. We are grateful to be your people, the dream of your heart. Amen. Our closing hymn, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Friends, go out into the world and yes, in this Advent time, cling to hope, practice peace, show love, but do not forget to celebrate joy. Live joy, share joy, laugh with joy, dance with joy, because the joy of the Lord is our strength, and joy just might turn the world upside down. Amen. <laughs>